This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. We're going to be reviewing a, a, a Louis Vuitton perfume today from their exceptional exclusive range of fragrances. This one is entitled Le Rose Sable, or no, Le, Le Sable Rosé. Le Sable Rosé. Do not come for me if I've pronounced this wrong. She ain't a French pronunciator. So, um, if I butchered it, I'm sorry, Louis, if I butchered the name of your fragrance. But uh, Le Sable Rosé, right? So I've been talking to my friends and uh, there are interpretations to be had about the translation of this title. Um, rosy Sands, Pink Sands, Rose Sands. It is a rose-based fragrance. So there's a word game with rose here. We're going to get to it. But before we get to it, before we spritz it on and uh, test it together and review it together, if you like my content, but haven't already, consider subscribing today to my channel. You can also push the join button next to the subscription button and become a member today and gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Deco Ball spelled together and gain access to extra perks there as well. And don't forget to thumb up this video and show the YouTube algorithm that uh, we're good for it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for that. This video is being filmed in front of a virtual live audience. So I have my co-reviewers in the chat section um, right beside me. I am going to, uh, so I have um, a two mil um, little bottleette of this perfume. It is an Eau de Parfum. And there you have it. Two mil Eau de Parfum. Whoa, it's from, you know, it's in the black bottle. It's from there. Um, more kind of um, aimed towards Middle East Oriental vibe uh, collection, which costs more than the other releases that they made. We're going to get to the pricing strategy that they have also in this review. So stay tuned for that. But uh, let's spritz it on, shall we? Okay. Le Sable Rosé, the sands. So it's a rose-based perfume, right? So the word game here is pink sands, but the rosé means it comes from roses, a rose-based perfume. Middle East, we got the dunes and the sands. So I guess they're trying to create a word game within the title of this fragrance to make us envision, envision this with me, sands... As far as the eye can see, sand is dry and there's sun, the desert. But growing from this desert are roses. Despite all the odds, roses are living in this desert. That's the idea, right? 2019 is the release date of this perfume. And we have Jacques Cavalier Beltrude is the nose behind it. The same guy who, you know... Also created Classique by Jean-Paul Gaultier. Cavalier is the artistic director, perfumer, knows behind all of Louis Vuitton fragrances that started being released in 2016. But he's not exclusive just to Louis Vuitton. He also works for other houses. For example, he just, I think he did the whole exclusive range of fragrances for Bulgari. Um, did he or did he not? Yes, he did. For Bulgari, he did um, in 2021 Dolce Estasi, uh, Riva Solare, Rock and Rome. Tacky title. But anyway, so um, in my notes, so this is a, a very simple structure for a perfume. Uh, we got rose, ouds, ambergris, um, Bulgarian rose, rosa centifolia. Ambergris, saffron, black pepper, and agar wood, or oud. So, when you first spray this fragrance, it, it, you get the most beautiful rose, it, as close to a natural rose as, as you can possibly get. Unfortunately, that rose dissipates within minutes, and what is left is that kind of synthetic-y oud. 
that we're so used to in niche perfumery since years now and we're like already so over it but alas this perfume was released in 2019 so like it was already kind of you know 2019 we were already over the oud but anyway uh and a louis vuitton is so not over oud that this year they're releasing another perfume called oud pur pure oud limited to 2000 bottles uh, worldwide uh and the price uh, point for 100 mil 1200 euro um and Jacques Cavalier says that this is pure oud. It's very rare to have pure oud. Not synthetic oud, but real oud. Blah, 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 right? So I guess if they're releasing their pure oud for 100 mil, 1,200 euro, uh, and stating that in that perfume they're utilizing natural oud, then I suppose that in the bottle that they charge you 315 euro for 100 mil, I Suppose that in that bottle, they do not use real oud, but synthetic oud. Otherwise, they would also make that bottle cost you a thousand euro and up. So, it's a soapy, almost aldehydic type of smell in the opening. The rose with the oud mixed with um, the black pepper, the saffron, the ambergris. This is ambroxan. This is not... This is not real ambergris. Never, ever. It's a very synthetic smell. And I'm like, you're charging people 315 euro for a 100 ml bottle when your other perfumes within your range, Les Exclusives, not Les Exclusives, Louis Vuitton range of perfumes, the 100 ml bottles are usually around 220 something euro. So you're charging 100 euro more for these black colored bottles. Uh, these kind of bottles that are, you know, targeted to be mid Middle Eastern Oriental fragrances, you're charging much more for it. Why? Not because necessarily the quality of the juice inside of here and the ingredients are more precious than the ingredients you put into your other releases, Louis, but because you're targeting a market, the Middle Eastern market. They love their ouds, they love their perfumes, but they have a hair, they own their ouds. They own the heritage of the ouds. They own uh, the attar oils. They own that whole concept of living with oud. <laughs> and it, here comes a European luxury brand trying to dominate the market in the Middle East, but to exploit even more that market, they make these perfumes cost more because they know that the people there have more money and spend more money on perfumes in general. So that's already a red flag to me. Uh, upping the prices so much for this stuff uh, just because you have a market in mind uh, that will um, want to spend that much money on your product. Not because your product is worth that much, but because you think that they are ready to spend that much for your product. So you're utilizing your fame uh, and name Louis Vuitton, um, that you've raised in, in Europe uh, and you're exporting it to the Middle East, but you are selling them a product which is a dupe of their heritage and culture in terms of perfumery. Like this is their oud, their way of dealing with oud and with peppers and with saffrons and also with roses. Um but you're selling it to them with the price tag of your logo. But the quality is not better than the perfumes that they make and that they are so specialized in making out of oud. And this is where I have a problem with this because this perfume was not made for the European or the American market. Sure, it's also for sale, available for sale in the American and European markets or the Asian markets, but it is more aimed and targeted towards the Middle Eastern area. And um, so it kind of, it's not good enough for a Middle Eastern perfume because this is literally a European brand copying Middle Eastern perfumery and trying to sell it to them as a dupe of their own perfumes for a marked up price. 
it ain't good enough to be sold in Europe and in America because it's too expensive for what it is. And um, consumers in these countries know what they're buying. Um, I know I do. So you can't fool me. And on top of that, you have this oud explosion mixed with roses that is very soapy. And quite frankly, not as good as the, the original <laughs> oud rose fragrance uh, that came out in 2012. Uh, also already aimed towards Middle Eastern culture in terms of perfumery, but still back then it was still, you know, the time was still okay to release a perfume. Like it was still quite new, conceptually speaking, for America and, and Europe to release uh, a perfume like that. And that would be Dior's uh, Maison Dior, back then Privé range, today called Maison Dior, Oudis Pahan. I bought this full bottle in 2012 when it first came out. So this is the first batch. Ooh. This one has ripened. <laughs> this one is ripe. And uh, oh my gosh, this one has uh, ripened. Oh man. Yeah. They've reformulated this one as well with time, but um, it, and it, you know. 250 mil is the same price of the 100 mil of, of, of Louis Vuitton, right? But, and you could check out the review of Udi Spahan on my channel. I reviewed it many, many moons ago. So I'll put it in the card section up above here and in the description box down below the link to, to the review of Udi Spahan. Um, Udi Spahan has a much more complex structure at least in its first formulation. I haven't smelled the reformulated version yet. And it's still today with a marked up price. It's still cheaper than this one, but it smells better. They're both synthetic, okay? Both of them have, you know, their, their synthetic components. But this one has heft and depth. Well, this one, the opening rose is to die for, but it dies off within minutes. And then you're left with oud and ambroxan type of ambergris and pepper for a huge price. 100 mil, 315 euro. And this was like, this was the last markup because it went up 15 euro or something. It was like around 300 euro before, like just a couple of months ago. <laughs> it's like, I want to envision these landscapes and these sands uh, of roses growing on them and the poetry and the abstraction of the poetry. Oh gosh, I wrote a lot about this fragrance here. What did I write about? Uh, opening um, as if we are smelling a true rose that quickly morphs into a velvety skin scent. Yes, it stays very close to the skin. That's true. Um, and it turns lightly salty. And that saltiness is that ambergris mixed with the oud, but it's synthetic. It's a synthetic salty smell. Um, 10 to 20 minutes in, the rose descends into a deep background and the oud takes full charge. That's what I wrote. You see, I have my little notes here. Feeling the perfume as we go along. The oud taking over is too overpowering. Yeah, the perfume would have been better if it were only rose or a rose based or other base notes and woods, but no oud. Yeah, we got to move away from this oud stuff, you guys. Um... It smells like a very strong attempt from Louis to appeal to the Middle Eastern market, which I went through these notes as well. Um, and this is something that uh, Chanel has also been trying to do with uh, Le Lyon, Le Lyon de Chanel. Le Lyon de Chanel, which does not have any oud in it, but was constructed specifically 
with the Middle Eastern market uh, in mind. And in fact, they released it first there. Uh, so a lot of these perfume houses have this eye pointed towards the Middle Eastern market because that's where the money is at the moment. And um, while Le Lyon de Chanel's attempt, while Chanel's attempt at creating a perfume for that particular market is also fascinating for the European market and the American market because Le Lyon de Chanel does have enough complexity there to also be sold worldwide, a lot of other perfumes fall flat in that attempt. Uh, Le Sable de Rose, or whatever it's called. Uh, Le Sable Rosé is one of them. Um, seems like these brands are desperate for more... Um, Revenue and the Middle East seems to be their cash cow at the moment, at the detriment of the good quality perfumery from Europe. Because the Middle East has already its wonderful attar oils and oud-based fragrances. They don't need European luxury houses to try and come by and steal their heritage. Very colonial of these brands to try to profit off of other cultures. They add their own luxury brand logos and marked up prices on products that are made to smell like Middle Eastern perfumes. And the Middle Eastern targeted perfumes also have higher prices than the other Louis Vuitton releases. Another desperation move. Trying to maximize profit to the max. Another example of this is Louis Vuitton's newly coming, you know, the pure oud fragrance. Uh... But on the positive side, less is being produced as this means that certain ingredients are rare and it would harm the nature harvest too, um, too much if they were over harvested, meaning the pure oud fragrance that they only made 2,000 bottles of, meaning not so much oud was used. And so limiting the amount of bottles produced means that they also damage nature less. Debatable, debatable, but at least pro producing less is better. But at the same time, from 2016 to today, Louis Vuitton came out with 28 perfumes. We are damaging uh, nature. <laughs> we're, we're just overproducing. And every one of these brands has their niche fragrances now. They're like these luxury brands. Each one of them is churning out two to three to four uh, fragrances a year. I, I take Udispahan over um, Le Sable Rosé any day, not just because it's, it smells better to me, but also because it's cheaper. Um, and it has a typical Dior signature in it. Le Sable Rosé has a typical Jacques Cavalier signature in it as well, but... It doesn't take me on a journey. It makes me upset because I see through the marketing of this. This thing wasn't made with love. This thing was made, strategically made in the lab to to, to garner profits to, for the brand. It wasn't made with the need to, to create something beautiful. It was constructed in the lab to target a specific market and audience, and that's it. A specific type of clientele, a specific type of wallet, and that's it. It's a very planned out strategic move. And I hate that because it doesn't smell like any love or passion went into it. And perfume is all about emotions, love and passion. And if I don't smell that in a perfume, I don't want it, especially not for 315 euro. So anyway, that's my review. Uh, let me get to the chats. I really like uh, that one. Which one? I mean, the most... Partial. I love citrus and Hermes fragrances in general. Oh, we're talking about something totally else here. Um, Olfactive says Chanel has not done oud yet. Better not doing it than doing it wrong. I totally agree and I applaud Chanel for not having made any oud fragrances thus far. Um, Magna says my favorite perfume is Hermes Lemon Noir. Do you know that one? Thoughts? I have not smelt it. Daniel says Louis Vuitton perfumes cost 440 Australian dollars. For that price, it has to be amazing. The bottle alone is not enough to get that sort of money out of me. I would rather spend the cash on Chanel and Guerlain. And for that money, you would get three perfumes instead of one, by the way. Not at Les Exclusives, but the regular release ones. Andrew says, Oud is like the Anna Marie Curie 
or and a winter of fragrances like bye <laughs> olfactive says if i want a nice synthetic rose oud i just go for a shagaf oud for 30 euro olfactive story says i don't mind simple fragrances if there's if they're well done i don't mind simple fragrances if they're well done either in fact I would really like from Louis Vuitton to create just a pure rose perfume. I would buy that because Jacques Cavalier knows his roses. He knows his roses. Give him the opportunity to make just a single note rose perfume. I'm all in. I'm all in. But you tarnish it with an oud like this. No. Uh, Andrew says, Ambre Nuit was fun for a bit. But boring now. <laughs> Dior. Andrew says, the best olfactory expert ever. Queen. Ah, oh, thank you, Andrew. Queen, thank you. <laughs> and Daniel says, I live in hope of finding a Louis Vuitton perfume I like. As I said, I love the bottles. Uh, so far, I have not tried one from this brand that I wanted to buy, says Olfactive Stories. Neither have I. Um... Yes, Olfactive Story says they had also a fragrance called Ro Rose de Vent, de Vent. I have reviewed that one on my channel as well. Um, so the name of the perfume, you know, so it's a word game. Okay, pink sands, but actually it's a rose-based perfume. So we got rose dunes, uh, the sands of the roses, rosy sands. Filled sands filled with roses, roses growing on sands in the desert. That's the concept. Uh, yeah. Daniel says, in the seagull, I think Chekhov said something along the lines of, it is not the poet's words that matter. It is what he feels. I feel that way about perfumes. Good point. Damien says, pricing for Louis Vuitton perfumes is ridiculous. There's a huge disparity between the quality and prices here. Oh, completely. It's a ripoff. Let's be honest. Louis Vuitton is all money grab. They don't care about craftsmanship or storytelling, says Kevy W. Uh, Andrew says, I was so saddened that after the uh, U.S. gave everyone stimulus checks, uh, the lines were insane in malls to enter Louis Vuitton for those poor quality plastic bags. Quelle horreur. Um, oh, oh, we're over. Okay, that's uh, the last um, <laughs> the last comment. I mean, they still do good. I, I listen. I would still buy their canvases, their um, monogram canvas. I still would buy their wallets. I still I still think for luxury brands they're amazing. They last a lifetime. I have quite a bit of their small leather goods and bags, and uh, they they're not bad quality. Perfumes, different story and different category altogether. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and co-reviewing this perfume with me. Uh, you can subscribe to my channel today here on YouTube and you can push the join button next to the subscription button and become a member today. Also join me on Patreon, Super Deco All Spelled Together. Become a patron and uh, gain access to extra perks, including being featured as the co producer of the fashion bunker right here scrolling on the sidebar we got your names your credits scrolling at the on the sidebar you can also follow me on instagram facebook twitter super deco all spelled together follow me also on my chanel dedicated instagram profiles one called coco chanel is in my house all spelled together dedicated to my chanel collection and perfumes and the other one coco chanel privé all spelled together dedicated to the life of coco chanel I mean, none of these is really worth the money nowadays. But I would still go for Udi Spahan, especially if you can find a vintage version. A vintage, it's not vintage yet, it's not 20 years old. But if you can find the first formulation, this one is divine to die for. Um, Olfactive says, for that price tag, I would expect real rose at least. Maybe it is real rose. Could be real rose. But the synthetic oud covers it up in a way that you don't even know if it is real rose or not. Deco should cover the worth it Louis Vuitton item soon in one big compilation, says Andrew. <laughs> Andrew says, thank you, Queen. Amazing review as always. Thank you so much, Andrew. Fact of Story says, I'll just stick to L'Absolu d'Orient by Guerlain, I believe. Uh, Daniel says, uh, great idea. Yeah, I should maybe go more into that. Um, 
<sighs> Listen, I'm a sucker for rose. You give me a good rose, it can be a simple rose. I don't need anything more. A simple rose, far it goes. You mix a rose with a different type of nose, and who knows where it goes? Where it goes, nobody knows, because nobody likes that rose and that nose. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Until next time, never give up on love. Bye. Mwah.